Well, hey, how's it going? This is Steve. And uh, if you're a virtual instrument user, I just want to show you my favorite way to control uh, MIDI expression and things like that uh, with an app that's called Touch OSC. And especially for Spitfire audio products, um, I made a little template that I find is really helpful. Um, so, um, just, uh, just to tell you about Touch OSC, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. If you wanted to send me a million dollars, I'd be happy to take it. Um, but to Touch OSC, it's, um, touch control if you have an iPhone or Android or, um, iPad or, or whatever. Um, it comes with like all these templates built in. I don't find I ever use any of those. I like um, to make my own and it's very easy to make your own uh, on your desktop. So you can also download this Touch OSC editor um, for Mac or Windows or whatever you like. And um, the editor looks like this when it comes up blank and you can select your size. Um, for instance, if you want something for the iPad, you could do that. You could tell it the, you know, vertical or horizontal, how you want it to be there. You have different pages and stuff like that. Um, but essentially if you right click in here, you can create all these different things, rotaries, uh, faders, XY pads, multi push, multi XY, um, all kinds of stuff and essentially like let's say we say um, uh, a push button so this is something you could push um, you know with your finger on your touch screen and then you tell it, well, what do I what MIDI information do I want that to send and it could you know pretty much be anything so if you go here you know it could be a key it could be a, a control it could be even like alt shift R or something or uh, control R to, to do shortcut keys if you want to use it like that like transport or even editing or anything like that or if you go MIDI it could be a value um, control changes whatever you like um, and you can do a value range so there's lots of different things you could do you can also change the color um, to whatever you like um, what I like a lot is the XY pad. You can also resize elements um, to whatever's most comfortable to use. And then you can set, you know, for the X axis, if you go here, uh, uh, I want, okay, I want it to do a control change on channel 5, number 3, a range from 0 to 127, whatever. Uh, whatever you like and I want it to be green <clears throat> and you can also say you know control Y I want that to do something else um, and you can even put little labels on stuff if you want but there's LEDs there's there's rotaries you know that you can resize if you want some kind of rotary knob whatever's most comfortable or whatever helps you uh, creatively so what the one that I made that's really simple, but it's just super useful, especially uh, with Spitfire stuff. So I have loaded here the uh, Violin Virtuoso Total Performance. Um, and on this one, all I'm really using it for is uh, I have set up, let me make sure this is on camera. I have set up this guy here, whoa, uh, which is an XY, and I have the dynamics uh, that would be, you know, off to full dynamics all the way up. And then similarly, uh, what I've done with the vibrato control is the other axis. And so a lot of times, you know, on on like my physical keyboard here, I've got, you know, this 88 key thing with the sliders and whatever. 
it's very confusing to me <laughs> to do um, dynamics and vibrato uh, on two different um, on two different knobs or two different sliders or stuff. I you know I've done it that way a long time, but I just find this so much more natural to play um, expressively. So you'll see here you can see these guys moving. So if I if I hang out on the far left side, I can have I brought all the way down and dynamics up and down. So if I, which on this total performance patch, no vibrato triggers the tremolo deal. But if I slide a little bit over there, now I've got the non vib. And if I just slide my finger over, so on and so forth, you get the gist. Um, and that same kind of X, Y deal works the same with all these. Like here's the cello. It's just you know when you're when I'm playing those legato lines I'm only using one hand anyway um, and so to have my other hand just moving around um, that just feels really natural now the other thing that um, is with a lot of the Spitfire patches like for instance here Spitfire chamber strings violins one just the kind of main patch we have all these different articulations and you know some other patches have even more articulations so uh, let me make sure this is showing up on the screen so I've made uh, uh, rows of these buttons and I just alternated them orange and gray for myself <clears throat> but um, I essentially set these up um, as the key switches by they're really just saying press this key um, and I might change that because you know you can uh, set these up in contact by CC range or by key switch <coughs> by MIDI channel uh, and I don't know what the best way to do it is um, right now I'm using key switches as if I'm pressing these keys or whatever but one issue is you have to make a separate one for the real low instruments because usually they're uh it seems like they're a, a key switch for a violin ends up being in the playable range of uh a tuba and you get this crazy low note in you. Uh, but whatever uh so for instance i have these little guys here and if i just tap 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 um, it uh, will give me all the different um, articulations so here I go here's the chamber strings violins and my XY deal here so I can do my vibrato you know, slider and dynamics, all within just the same. And then 
and for key switch in there just right there. Get my longs. And uh, spiccato. Staccato. Get the pizzicato. Oligno. Tremolos. Trills. All that kind of stuff. Um, and there's more uh, key switches here than there are articulations, but that's okay. Because um, for some of the other patches, there's more and they go in order, so it will work with most of them. So it's kind of nice in real time, you could play legato like. So that's kind of cool, you know, if you're on like a longs, playing a chord, and then I hit the articulation for legato, now I can play something legato over that, and if I hold them down with my, my hand, the chord still rings. Whatever, so you get the gist with that. You could, um, you could you know, make another XY or another slide or something if you want for speed, or you could do a multi XY where you say, okay, I want the speed to always be slower, uh, the softer I'm playing, or something like that, whatever you like. Here's uh, horns. So you can, you know, you could, you could stack stuff like this. I don't usually work this way. Usually have everybody on their own track, but you could. Uh, I just put all the inputs, you know, to the same. You could just put Omni, right? And so I've got the Spitfire Studio Brass, four French horns, two trombones, two trumpets. Just switching between the the sh really short and uh, whatever this one is, marcato. So that that's kind of nice to be able to do that stuff. Uh, if you're if everyone was going to play the same thing, which isn't often the case um, but here we've got this is the symphonic brass horns and I'm gonna arm that I'm gonna arm symphonic brass uh, two trombones this is symphonic brass six trumpets I don't have the symphonic woodwinds I have the studio uh, woodwinds, so that's fine. And I've just put a stack here just for fun. Flutes, clarinets, and bassoons all receiving the same thing. And I made like a, a string stack here just to show what you could do. Violins, one, two, violas, and uh, celli. So I'm having all those play together at once and they're all gonna respond to the same stuff. So I'll do the legato key switch.
whatever, for just putting a, a idea down fast. Now, not every Spitfire library, um, you know, most of them seem to follow the same pattern for key switches of what type of sound it'll be. Uh, you know, for instance, certainly within a range, like within the, um, you know, symphonic series, they're all pretty similar of what kind of a thing you'll get. When you're mixing matching, you might get some surprises. Uh, like, for instance, if I go here to do my longs, you know, the strings are the longs and the horns are the longs. The woodwinds, it just happens that key switch is the long flutter. So when you stack stuff like this, you can get combinations you might not normally have done. Same thing, we could do longs here and play a chord. Whatever, you can mix and match whatever you like, but especially for uh, the legato lines and just like playing through um, a lot of the articulations live and, and not having to worry so much about which the heck key switch um, it is. And uh, the other thing I'll just show you real quick. This isn't Spitfire necessarily, but for like a, a organ, this is the, the B5 V3 organ. Um, I use it on this too when I'm doing I made a, a different one that's actually just an XY thing. And you can save. So BX, well, rotary. So it's just a, a big XY and up and down is that swell pedal. And then switching over to the right side, similar to like the vibrato. Gets the turns the rotary on or off. So it's useful for that. And and one other thing I'll mention, I didn't have this set up, but uh, when you set this up, I'm also the iPad is is wireless. It's going through. Uh, either Bluetooth or through the Wi-Fi router, I forget how I set it up. But there's this little companion app that you have to touch OSC bridge and you can set it up. I'm trying to remember if it was, I think it might have been my IP address or something that I had to put in there. Uh, but then when you instantiate it on your iPad, you double click this OSC bridge. Seems like nothing happens, but it's there. And depending on what DAW you're using, if you go here to preferences, uh, I have it as a MIDI device. Touch OSC bridge is what you want. You could also set it as, you know, your controller if you want to put 16 faders on there and have, you know, multi-touch um, mixing for automation or whatever. That's something you could do if you wanted. Uh, and then for MIDI, you know, you need to use multiple inputs if you're also playing the keyboard. So I could say my Impact LX88, that's the MIDI controller the keyboard, but I also want to touch OSC bridge, so it probably varies on different DAWs, but on this one I can just put all MIDI inputs, and I get both. And what I was going to show you is another one I made that's kind of cool for the uh, the SWAM uh, saxophones. Uh, let's see here, where are those guys? 
So let's take like this one. Tenor sax from audio modeling. Um, so this is just the default. I'll change the attack sensitivity to expression. I like to turn up the uh, the breath noise and the key noise a lot to have it sound a little more real. Um, and then I made a I made one especially for these saxophones. So I'll go to layout and swamp tax control. And let me flip over here to make sure I'm holding it up in the right place. So maybe it's a little hard to see, but what I have is uh, that same idea of the XY for dynamics and vibrato. But I also have a button there that is uh, the overblow. And then I have, that's uh, just a, a latching tap on or tap again to turn it off. I also have these, oh gosh, sliders. Uh, and those just slide up and down however you like. One is for growl and one is for flutter tongue. So let me show you what those do. So let's say we're here, I'll have everything off. And it sounds like absolutely nothing because I don't have it armed. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so no vibrato, just dynamics. When you set that expression, the attack sensitivity to expression, then you get different attacks. Depending um, how loud you're playing the attack of the initial transient changes. So, and then also with the vibrato. options on these um, you can change the expression curve and all that kind of stuff um, I haven't experimented too much with those I don't know what the difference is logarithmic or linear curves uh, I guess you can mess with that squeak over blow I like turn up this random vibrato a little bit and a little slower uh, okay, what's the thing I'm looking for? Oh, breathy PPP. So when it's very, very quiet, you get uh, extra breathiness. Vibrato's a little slow. You could even make it a multi XY for the more vibrato, uh, the faster it goes. Uh, you could make a vibrato rate. Uh, I might try that actually. That's a good idea. Self. <laughs> So overblow, if I tap that, here's without it. slider so I could have none or I'll fade it in. So you go like 
And then flutter tongue. So, um, you know, to do all that, uh, you know, with rotary and co coders or the sliders or expression pedal or something like that would kind of be a nightmare <laughs> uh, to mess with that. But with Touch OSC and making your own custom things for like what do you want to be able to control and how, um, it makes it it makes it a lot easier so I don't recall how much touch OSC is but I don't believe it cost that much um, I bought it like years ago by Android or iOS how do you get this thing oh get touch OSC maybe it's in the if I go to the app store it's only available for iPhone and iPad. Well, that's because I'm on my Windows computer. Uh, I believe you guys can figure it out if you're interested. Oh, $4.99. So, uh, very affordable. And um, you can you can make it do anything you want, any kind of MIDI message. So, I really enjoy it, and I think it's super useful for um, controlling... Uh, especially Spitfire stuff, but I don't do a lot of stuff with <clears throat> like analog synth things, like virtual analog synth smogs or stuff. But I assume you could program in lots of cool stuff for patching cables and filters and whatever else. So, anyway, let me know if you have any questions about it. And uh, I hope you guys are having a good winter, and I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye.